Man, oh man, oh man. I kind of like the phrase, spend some time. It's a very special episode, man. Very special episode today. This is for the record. Charles and Hamilton. Time. We don't speak, but can you speed up? Because it's getting even harder for people to keep up. For those of you who weren't listening carefully just now, this is for the record. It's your boy Jay. How's it going? And we have a, an incredibly talented, amazing, well, the talented, Charles Hamilton. How you doing, man? I'm blessed to be alive, man. Just, hey, that part for sure. That part for yeah, sure. Yeah, man. Everything from racist cops to gangbangers and just overall haters. It, you can't look for what to take your life, but you got to be aware that these things do exist. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely, man. Um. There's a lot of different places we could start. I'm gonna turn this back up for the hood. Look, I'm not even gonna turn the song off because it's such a beautiful bed of music behind us. Um, I mean, I'm going to just dig in right with what this triggers me as, as a musician or artist, when I hear it, is that your music has this ability to be chaotic and blissful at the same time. Mm. There's a lot, a lot happening in some of your songs, Mm -hmm. and it all can be heard perfectly. Mm. Is that intentional? Absolutely. You know, like, whenever you have a story to tell... You want to give it the old dynamics of the story. Like, mm. the the more graphic the details, the better the story. Right. And I've shared my story repeatedly. Absolutely, and absolutely. And I'm proud to share my story. You mentioned uh, Sonic to Hamilton. You know, I, I feel like because I haven't been speaking on Sega mm-hmm. as much, uh, people may have waned away from what I was presenting. Mm. But everything that I said... You know, when taken in a philosophical context, could be seen in both Sonic movies. So right. I feel like I got nothing more to say. Oh, facts. You know, facts. Like it's overall just everything from embracing new friends and being a hero to mm-hmm. finding a problem. Like Sonic does fail. You know, yeah. so you gotta you gotta give him room to fail because he's human. Highs and lows. Yeah. The slow yeah. moments and the fast moments in uh, Sonic terms. You know, um, so it, he's always the hero, but and when you play the game, you can't lose the game. Yeah. So you can't get upset at Sonic. You got to be mad at yourself for playing the game wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what that leads me to is, man, um, so what I know you for first is Sonic the Hamilton. That's why I played it first. That's a blessing. Um, And I mean, that's a really, really big start. Yeah. You know, for me as a listener. And... I was the guy who was getting mad that people hadn't heard it. So I was running around preaching the gospel of Sonic the Hamilton, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I just downloaded it off a blog, you know, just, I was in my, in that era of just listening to new shit all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who's got Sonic, but it's like the Jay-Z black album cover. Who did this? You know? And I downloaded it and it was very wild because, and this is something that is a common denominator in all of your work. Um, I can tell that whatever you're into in your personal life at the time, and I don't just mean like what you're going through, but literally what you're listening to, you will use music theory to force it into your music. So if you're enjoying a specific artist or record, you will take that and make it work with what Mm -hmm. you're doing sonically, pun intended. Of course, Um, of course. And so there's a Beyonce record, put a ring on it, Mm -hmm. you took the sonic ring and you combined it into a record and you have a Sonic record with a Beyonce sample and Sonic samples mm-hmm. and it's chaotically beautiful. Okay. Um, Thank you. Is that something that you always consciously do? How do you do that? What, what makes you do that? Well, I'm, I'm really into the English language overall. Mm-hmm. So I always find ties between pop culture, mm-hmm. history, black history, urban mm-hmm. myths. I always find ties. Yeah. I like to find the root. I go for the root. Yeah, you know, I, I, speaking of music, I listen to Curtis Mayfield. Right, he has an album called Roots. Mm-hmm. Now, if you know what you're doing, all my samplers out there, I, I mentioned Curtis Mayfield Roots. I don't want to give away no Curtis Mayfield records, but if you know what you're doing, 
you can really strike gold with a Curtis Mayfield roots. Yeah. You know, and once you get to the root of uh, an urban myth, you know what I'm saying? There's an urban myth that says Beyonce can't write her mm-hmm. own songs. Well, the dream wrote single ladies put a dream put a ring on it. Mm-hmm. But who's to say that Beyonce didn't inspire that? Right. Just just by her energy. Mm-hmm. That kind of energy alone is Grammy award winning energy. Yeah. So that's why I compared a sonic ring to a Grammy. Like I want to yeah. collect Grammys. Like that's yeah. that's my goal. Yeah. Or it was my goal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't know if I've been jaded by the music business. I, I I think the pressure I put on myself to make Grammy Award caliber music hmm. um, makes for a good work ethic, a good attitude about life and everything. Yeah, and I have, I have questions regarding that also. I mean, obviously, you're a person who I can say straightforwardly has experienced the highest of highs and lowest of lows. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean that in regards to regular life and the music industry which is obviously there's an era where you're on the front of a cover with you know household names and all that on double xl mm-hmm. um major label deal you know things most artists go if i get that that's it i'm good i couldn't stop there yeah i of couldn't course stop not. there i couldn't stop there like I, I had to like i got the deal i got my own house got my own apartment you know i made sure my mentor he had a mercedes benz my mm-hmm. manager was all over the place like he, yeah. he was good I made sure the people that had an impact in my work ethic you know mm-hmm. not so much my songwriting but you know H.O. was like a father figure mm-hmm. and I'm always love him for the, the advice he gave me which mm-hmm. is you know scale back your mind and give it your heart and soul right because lyrically that song 10 minutes is so dense it is that it, it takes a while for some for a listener to catch all of what I'm saying. Yeah. And then you have to play the game Sonic and then lose in order to... You, you need someone who has experience in barsmanship, the video game itself, an ear for what you're doing all to actually take in the record completely. Absolutely. And I have records in modern time. The record we just did. Yeah. You know, like... I, w- I wanted to kind of play off of you because you, you seem like a very peaceful kind of dude. Yeah. But when the drama comes, you're not hiding. You got it. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So, like, they got to break out the riot gear for you. Yeah. For me, I go to war differently. You know what I'm saying? I don't... Mm -hmm. I don't... Scrap in the street. I can. Yeah. But that always leads to an audience. Yeah. If we're going to do something, if it's going to be something, meet me here at this time. Mm -hmm. Don't bring no cameras. Don't bring none of that. We're going to handle it. Yeah. And then, obviously, there's moments that pop off that it's just like, it's got to go down. But... I bring my own riot gear, mm-hmm. and I figure I figure my credentials are my riot gear. So I don't have to fight you because, on paper, I'm on a different level than you. Absolutely, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes perfect sense. Uh, man, you you brought up so many things I wanted to bring up points on. <laughs> um, I guess first and foremost, it's um, with all that being said, now you've experienced the high, the low, the middle. What is the ideal place now? Now that you've you've touched every base, you've done the home run, you've got to hit a single, you've you hit a foul ball, you struck out. Um, where do you want to end up in the grand scheme now? What's ideal? Being a commentator. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Kind of going back to what brought me the fanfare that I still don't believe I have. Like I was yeah. searching my name on Twitter today and I was like, oh God, like people have been reaching out for a minute. Yeah. Um just to be a commentator. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Going back to blogging. I got the YouTube channel, The Towns of Mr. Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I release music on there. I plan to do some more shows, you know, just have some fun. Yeah. With my YouTube channel, you know? Um like I said, just commentary. I'm originally a journalist. Like, I'm a musician to the core. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but I'm a journalist. You're, like, you are, chosen by the universe to do music. Bless you. Yeah, you are. You. you know, and I'll explain why that is in a second. Because I'm not want to just say a crazy compliment mm. and not have something to back it up. But, um, yeah, in my opinion, people like you. It doesn't matter what's happening in life. You're going to be thinking of music, writing music. The music we did today, you didn't write a single word down. Mm. You know, I'm over here tr- you know, trying to type nah, up my verse. I appreciate that. I, we were vibing together. So oh, it's absolutely, not, absolutely. It's not a matter of, like, competing with a verse. or Not at all. It's that and yeah. I remember when I, when I did write, mm-hmm. 
I'd be in the studio. I have the beat playing, six or seven niggas, dudes in the studio. Mm-hmm. And like, who who got on this beat? Yeah. Nobody saying nothing. So mm-hmm. I leave 20 minutes later. Who got on the beat? Yeah. I'm going to start writing to it. Then yeah. start to inspire somebody else to write to it. Then we have a whole full-on song. Yeah. And I, I'm not upset that I'm the first voice on the beat. Yeah. It's more so the work ethic. You yeah. have a strong work ethic. Like it didn't yeah. take it didn't take you long to write your verse. No, you, yeah. You and you got some classic bars on there about yeah. Thanos and Vision. Like <laughs> I I've never seen um the the movie with Thanos in it. But Yeah, it's it's just a Marvel movie where Thanos um he kills Vision by grabbing him and like with by by the palm and crushing his skull or something like that. Mm. And I just love the thought of the, the double meaning of snapping on a track and someone else having a vision, but if I'm Thanos and you have a vision, I'll crush it kind of thing. You well, know? that's where arguably, and here we go with, with the Doom fans, um, arguably Doom was being a villain by crushing dreams like that. Yeah. So if you got to check his lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. um, when he gives you advice on a woman... <laughs> like I'm yeah. coming with the U-Haul super like he gave you that advice so yeah. he's a superior being to you no matter how low his self esteem is off the rip yeah well I mean while we're talking about it no better time than the present to play let's play a, a bit of the record we did and um I'm gonna talk to you while it plays a bit so okay. there won't be a good opportunity to rip this song but <laughs> the talented yeah yeah Steady the tour, ready for more, get me galore. They brought scissor decisions made, ready for war, yours truly. They call me TDE, cause I'll touch down everywhere. I'm like CP3, regarding Steph, it's only meant for me to go against the best. I never check about a threat, and this check is on my chest. They playing checkers, this is chess. I don't stress about an opposition. I might snap Excuse like Thanos. Yeah. So, I, so I have a question for you. Um, so obviously for me, when we decide to do a record, I've heard countless records mm. of yours. I know your BPMs. I know I know your sound. Okay. And you don't know anything about mine. <laughs> oh jeez. What's that what's that like to take that leap and just do the record? You know, what's your thought process there? It's an adventure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's that's as far out as I'm gonna go. That, it can, <laughs> you know that what I mean? can go very left. I know. I know. So <laughs> what do you have? What's up your sleeve? Yeah. You know, put it on the table. Yeah. You're yeah, not you know, it on the table, are you? You're not telling me what's up your sleeve. Up uh, my sleeve? Yeah. Oh, there's nothing up my sleeve. I'm, I'm an open book. Same here. Yeah, and That's why all I, I'm saying is, you know, so for example, you know, you you go, you know what? Let's let's do a record, and you know, maybe I come out of left with some crazy drill beat, and you know, I, I rap way out of pocket, my whole sixteen, you know, and and you've got to either chameleonize yourself and make it work. Or you've got to mm. just do what you do best, and then, hey, hey guys, if you listen, wait for my part, kind of thing, you know, um, you know. And I'm the type. I I think I even mentioned it in my verse. Hold on, this is a good opportunity to. Me, cause it's luxury just to speak. What it be? Was it love for me? At some point in time, stuck on the crime, escaping that by puffing a lie. Let's go. Yeah, drive got me sliding in. No matter who arrived to a pioneer. I've got me sliding in, yeah. no matter who and you know, for me, when um the way I write things fast is coming up with schemes that fuel me or observing around me. Mm-hmm. And so on this song, in order to write it quickly, I did both. And uh, one of them is when I say it doesn't matter who arrived to arrives to a pioneer. That's kind of like the philosophy of someone like you who does a record with someone they don't know, which is it doesn't really matter who else is on the track. I've paved my own path and I know what I'm going to do when I hear a record, you know, Um but I guess my only thoughts are what's your thoughts before you start doing a record and then your thoughts after you do a record uh, I would have to I, I would have to show you better than I can tell you yeah cause it's like I've made I'm sure you've heard I, I can make an album in a day yeah yeah you know but I try not to get too distracted by what can go on in that day yeah and if it's majorly impactful it will be a part of a song mm-hmm. but I usually etch things out way before I hit the studio mm-hmm. you know so I think to myself you know what a wonderful world but um could this record be played from track one to track done yeah 
and it flowed through consistently, with, even with all the bumps and ebbs, ebb and flows and stuff. Mm. I mean, so here's the thing. There's, and this is the gift and the curse of someone who's... I hope that made sense. It made perfect sense. And I'm, I'm going to build off that right now. That's so, that cool. So I was, what I was about to say was, mm. um, I caught the... Uh, I'm working with Charles, like, Logan. Yeah. That was retarded. <laughs> and um, I, said, I said, I hope it makes sense. And I was pointing out my verse. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a cheese ball like that, man. <laughs> yeah, and I mean... That's why I think I was sitting next to you when I wrote that bar, and I was like, "Look, your name. I could do a sixteen off of your name Bless alone. You. Bless him. Like, Bless him. Bless him. Which is crazy because my name's useless. <laughs> it's like shoot the J. That's about as far as it goes. But ah, uh, don't sleep on J. You ever look at a treble clef? That's true. That's true. See, you you going layered with it too. Oh uh, no, nah, I that's see, it's crazy because a lot of my favorite artists, modern artists. Jay Dilla, Jay Z, mm-hmm. like they know about the power of Jay. Like Absolutely. There's, there's power in C, you know, the bass clef. That's mm. that's pretty much the foundation. Yeah. But the melody and the pocket itself is a treble clef, and you mm. can find the letter J in the treble clef. That's true. That's true. So you're, you're high. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, actually, that was that was very dope. I might steal that. <laughs> um, my uh, my next thought was pretty much um. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna pull up the next record too. Um, you're, I was, what I was getting to is obviously you're, you're talking about how you can make an album in a day, mm. and that's one side of the scale, right? Which is the fact that you can, you understand the science so well that you know, okay, that's that. One plus one equals two. Boom. This is what happens there. You know, when I, when this is in this key, I do this or, you know, you, you have almost, you've left breadcrumbs behind all of your journeys that make it easy to go through trips. Now, you know, you can get route yourself through any type of musical journey quickly. And that's how you can crank out an album in a day mm. it's from years of putting the reps in, you know, of course. Um, but on the flip side, because you're a true creative and an imaginary, you're also a world builder when you make albums. Right. Mm. So obviously Pink Lava Lamp's not named that because you just like the color pink. Right. Uh, Sonic the Hamilton's not named that because you play Sonic video games. You're... And my last name is Hamilton. <laughs> that as well. Important. Um, <laughs> but you literally... There's layers of like, okay, I can listen to that album. Let me listen to the beats. There's a layer of Sonic the Hamilton in there, right? Let me listen to the lyrics. There's multiple layers of Sonic and the Hamilton in that, mm-hmm. which is like, I can listen to it once from the perspective of, oh, this is a Sonic album. I can listen to it once as the perspective of, this is Charles talking about Charles. And then there's everything in between that a lyricist does, right? Mm-hmm. Those albums don't get made in a day. They don't. So Sonic to Hamilton, um, I started working on it in Fight Club Studios. Mm-hmm. It was about finding the right studio. I, right. Started, I did uh, 10 minutes in Fight Club Studios, mm-hmm. um, put cash up Fight Club. Uh, let me see. And I did uh, Where's My F in Genesis out here in California. Oh, okay. So, and I did, I did that way before Sign the Hamilton. So, yeah. Um, it was about making the beats first. Like, yeah. I wanted to make the Sonic beats bang. Yeah, like, which I, is not easy. At all, because they already, they're already dope. Yeah. So I was like, how can I make these shit bang? Yeah. And um, I spent maybe a week making the beats and half a week writing the rhymes. Mm. And I, I recorded it in my home studio. Okay. So... Uh, really, nobody was around. Mm-hmm. I, I got hella twisted, so I can tell this the, the story of Sonic. Mm-hmm. Um, played the game a lot, and um, it was November tenth when it dropped. Mm-hmm. It dropped on my birthday, November tenth. Okay, and I sent it to DJ Ski, and I went right into intervention. I, I no thought about it at all. I just did it and went to the next project. Mm-hmm. And um, after intervention, I had a bye week. Hmm. Uh, because the, the Pink Lava Lamp dropped. Yeah. And I got some rest, and that's literally from intervention to awkward. So That's a crazy stretch right there. Yeah, I can't really tell you. I it, It's kind of a blur, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, that's insanity. You know, you know spe- that's crazy to look at from the outside. I can't imagine from the inside you dropping all of that. And purely opinion, but that is some of the most creatively crazy shit I've ever heard all be dropped in what would you say is the time span all that came out within so every two weeks 
there was a new project in the Hamiltonization process. Mm. Um, whatever the two week buy was to December for the Pink Lava Lamp, mm. um, I spent the rest of that month until Christmas. Mm. Uh, uh, Christmas, I was with a female. Yeah. Um, and then after January, I started back up producing again. Mm. And it was done February 14th. Mm-hmm. 2009 awkward yeah you know and it was it was a trip because it's as detailed as Sonic the Hamilton mm-hmm. and it's got super Sonic on the cover so it's like let's get you up to speed Charles Hamilton believes he's Sonic the Hedgehog and loves Rihanna <laughs> yeah. you know and the awkward thing is when I actually see Rihanna after awkward what is either of us gonna say yeah like, well is it this awkward so yeah I probably blew my chance before I even said anything but the record though <laughs> the record still exists yeah. you know what I mean like and if you know about um, the ancient uh, I guess she's a demigod Rihanna mm. Mm. like she's in everything like the girl that the girl you always see on top of a unicorn mm-hmm. that's Rihanna that's wild yeah so it's like I didn't know that yeah like is, is Rihanna Rihanna like <laughs> Why is she always on TV? Not not as a shade, but like yeah, yeah. If, if she's an ancient being, mm. why would you put her on TV to be exploited? Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe and you know people talk to me about it. It's not exploitation. She's a young girl. She's got dreams. Like yeah, yeah. but when she finds herself, she's gonna find herself in front of everybody else. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I just wanted to kidnap her and serenade her all day. It wasn't about sex. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it wasn't bad as she is. It wasn't mm-hmm. about sex. You know? Yeah. But I don't know how we got from Sonic to Hamilton. Right? <laughs> well, I mean, like we were talking about that that stretch of time you had, right, right, you yeah. know, where you you were throwing actual haymakers. You know, um, those projects are big projects. You know, um, I think two of them out of your catalog are damn near classic mixtapes. Pink Lava Lamp is considered a classic it's considered mixtape. Considered a classic. Well, yeah. it's an album because it's all original. Production. It's all original. Yeah. Well, you got, you're kind of. This is another conversation to have. You are the beginning era of people who make mixtapes that are really albums. Um, this is the So Far Gone era, the mm-hmm. Pink Lava Lamp era, the Finally Famous era. Finally um, Famous. I remember yeah. that. All you guys made mixtapes, and they were completely original. Made at that, you guys made them yourselves from scratch. They're albums. Well, in you know? that case, what defines an album? Absolutely, absolutely. And the only thing, only reason I'm calling it a mixtape is because I have to go to Dat Piff to get it. You know, <laughs> well, I, well, you can go to Charles Hamilton dot app. Excuse me, Charles Hamilton dot app. No homo, Charles Hamilton dot app, and mm-hmm. you can get an archive of all my music, instrumentals, songs, YouTube, blog. Charles Hamilton dot app. Yep. Which is uh where I got everything from. Yeah. So yeah, and that it's a pretty cool site too. It looks clean. So Yeah, um so, so the you the Star Chaser that made that website, mm-hmm. he's the number one voted voted Kanye fake page. Is he? So they make fake pages <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah. And he's the number one voted Kanye page. Let's go. So he made a, he made a whole <laughs> website for me. Shout out to, to you, Reg. Reg is that's a dope. Fool. That's dope. Um, yeah. So uh, before we get any further, I'm gonna play a record off of Pink Lava Lamp. Um, I think my favorite off the project. Um, let's do it. Ooh, troublemaker me. So much bounce. I don't know how you found this pocket on this. This is uh, the most timeless subgenre of hip hop. This right here. New hop. Yep. I was so it's gone. on songs and trade. Wrote a song a day. No childhood like Jean Benet. But it was all in faith that my thoughts could make awesome cake. But ultimately, dreams fall and break. No job, no life, just music. So I could just lose myself, but just lose it. Bog and Dutch use it. Got my mind. You know what this song made me realize? You're. We talked about this off air a little bit. I'm going to pause because I don't want to skip much. And I just. 
literally lost the record. Um, talk to me about the level of bleeding you do on a record. Um, I mean, the first name that comes to mind when I make that statement is Joe Budden, mm-hmm. who's a, a very bleed on the track, make the pin bleed type of artist. Mm. Um, but I think that's something about you that might be um, unnoticed or maybe assumed that it's just casual and easy to do. You right, know, right. but you put everything, it, seem, it seems like, everything into the music, at least through a phase of your life you did. Um, uh, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Um, I feel like some things I put on the record, both he, on on the record, the interviews and on in my music. Yeah, it's therapeutic. Yeah, you know, like some things I gotta get over. Mm. Um, you mentioned shining. Um, mm. not getting into no controversies or whatever. Mm. I had a I had a girlfriend named Toya, mm-hmm. and she loved the song Shining. Yeah, and she did not want to accept that it was a suicide letter. So she wanted to get the sheet music mm-hmm. for Shining tattooed on her. Mm. And I'm like, how do I, I don't want you to, yeah. you know, embrace my suicide. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I, I never gave it to her. But at the end of the day, that story right there is like me bleeding. Cause, like, Absolutely. I, I I went a while without having a girlfriend. Like High school, was everything changed for me. Mm-hmm. But... I had just broken up with another girl, Tiffany, mm-hmm. when I met Toya. Mm-hmm. So I, she was kind of like my hiding place, mm-hmm. and she was, you know, supportive of the music, but she would always play what's hot. Yeah, and I would try to explain to her what's hot isn't what's best for you. Yeah, I'm absolutely trying to make the best possible music, mm-hmm. and hope you know she understood that. Yeah, but a lot of you know, going through my memories, like remembering the exact time, like three twenty in the morning when my mom would walk in, mom rest in peace. And while I'm playing the keyboard, like hmm. those actual moments that are like, I wanna snapshot this, hopefully somebody can see my silhouette on my keyboard yeah. right next to my radio while I'm trying to learn this song, learn this hmm. song, learn this song. Like just the overall element of being in music. Like I wanna I love I want music to fulfill me so much that I push out yeah. a lot of memories, pain, sometimes even good times. You know yeah. what I mean? When you put when you put a memory on the record, it doesn't last in your head anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've noticed that. But mm-hmm. when you put memories like graphic memories mm-hmm. of your life in a song, it doesn't la- it doesn't last within you anymore. It lasts mm-hmm. in that song. Yeah. So I've been trying to make me not last no more and just exist in a song <laughs> yeah which is that's a dark thought i'm a dark person you know i, I am too so <laughs> I, I, respect respect yeah so i mean it's i have an affinity for artists who do that good <laughs> <laughs> nice game but i'm still out no um but so here's here's where it uh things are a little bit tricky in my opinion because you also you're if you're a world builder and you're also bleeding with the pen and you're also producing all the music and you know, you're doing, you're wearing a million hats. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cons to that. Um, doing everything in my opinion is not the best way to do things. Okay. Um, you still do everything. I mean, I, I disagree. What do you not do? I mean, I disagree with doing having everything. a bad side. Yeah, okay. I disagree with that, with that being a downfall. Yeah. Um, if you come to the table with everything prepared, the only thing left to do is to invest. Yeah. I understand that part. Um, but if I come to the table and I go, I got the guy, the best guy to ever make a turkey. I got the best mac and cheese on earth from this person. And I made the green beans and mashed potatoes. I spent less time and I have the same package, right? And I was able to really hone in on what I was doing. And it's a lot easier for me to, I, I can make me a mean turkey and a mean mac and cheese. Like I can do it. And sometimes mm-hmm. I will do it. But I think that it can be almost mentally exhausting to always do it, you know, or maybe it takes, if I really want my pen to bleed and I made the beat and I engineered it by the time the song is done, I don't, I don't even want it. I you know. mean, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. Um, that's part of the reason why you haven't gotten so much from me is because my beats as of late have been so in-depth. 
Mm-hmm. And it's just like, oh man, like if I give you the instrumental, you probably not gonna like the instrumental. If mm-hmm. I make a song to it, you probably not gonna like the song. Yeah. It's gonna take time for you to you know embrace this new sound that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But it's all standard quality sound. It's yeah. standard sound. Shout out to Marcus. Mm-hmm. You know, but I might take a ninth wonder beat. Mm-hmm drop some shit on it mm-hmm. and just mix it the way I mixed one of my beats mm-hmm. and drop it on YouTube to people like they love it mm-hmm. you know but it's, I'm insecure by my production because no one is doing it the way I do it yeah now nah, like I once again would love to show you I, don't, I there's no the tools I need aren't here yeah but man like the way I'm doing it now is just like an eye opener yeah, you know? and I mean, that's... So, I I have this topic every episode. Um, and it's that I think music is made up and composed of just two things. The science and the art. The science are the things that are undeniably one plus one equals two. Mm. And music has those things. There's science and math to music, right? You know, these these notes harmonize together. This flow works on this BPM. This flow does not work on this BPM. You know, there's rules. But then there's art, and that's that's everything else, you know, which is you going, not everyone does it this way, but it's standard. That's you mixing the art with the science, right? Because you're going, what if I did something no one else is doing, and I know that it makes sense? Because you understand both ends of it, right? Um, my favorite people to talk to are people who understand both sides, which is when you make a chaotic sonic beat, but also it sounds blissfully balanced and EQ'd, you know? Um, a regular person just can't do that. Even if they have the exact same idea as you, you know? They take Sonic, they take Beyonce, they take internal thoughts and create a narrative, and maybe it's all a metaphor. It'll sound like junk, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, where, do you, where do you fall in that, you know? What are your thoughts with that? I mean, I've I've I literally started a company called Standard Sound. Okay. So I, I've I've discovered the standard sound. I'm just not doing it being a rebel. Yeah. Because once you once you figure out all the components of one plus one equals. Yeah. You What's look next? at yeah, you kinda of look at it like I don't wanna do math, I wanna do subtraction, I wanna do division, multiplication. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I, this is the same shit addition. Mm. But I don't know. Like I said, I've I've achieved certain levels of understanding when it comes to music. That are you okay with the fact that not doing the traditional balance of the math is going to make you more hard to understand and listen to and stuff like that? No, because there's this conversation. It's true. You know, like I feel like there's a, there's an understanding. With what I'm saying now, unless you unless you be in a dark nigga and let me not make sense. No, no, not at all, not at all. But and yeah. I mean, I hear all of it in your music. But so I mean, I'll give you a straight up answer here. You have certain songs where I know because I understand music really well. If I play this for a stranger, they're gonna be like, "Damn, who is this?" And I also know if I play them the wrong song by Charles Hamilton, mm-hmm. they're gonna go, "Who the fuck is this? Turn this off." Those are the same person with the same skill set. That, that guy didn't fall off and that guy wasn't on fire. They're the same guy, you know, and the guy you are, the guy who's experimental and furthering his using his mu- music theory, that guy's harder to listen to for the average year. Um, are you OK with that? Uh, I think I put the same amount of effort into each individual song. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I can accept the criticism. Yeah. So, and I mean, to me, in theory, before you made some of your music that blew up and was called a classic, you could argue it was weird. And if you had never ventured out and done it, you would never have known that it would be widely accepted also. You know, so I think I think that's what makes artistry beautiful. Like for me with movies, I'm a big, big movie guy. Mm -hmm. I don't buy movies that are remakes um, sequels or spinoffs, I buy originals. Mm-hmm. Like something where I go, this guy took a chance. Because right now in the movie industry, you know, it's how many comic books can I turn into big big picture films and stuff like that? Or how about I remake that movie from 1995 today? And I'll watch those, but I'm not going to go out and buy it and endorse it and all that. Because I'm trying to encourage the original people to keep going. Nice. 
you know um and i think that's i think you're one of those with the music you know you're a, a jordan peele you know mm. um get out is not a remake right. <laughs> you know it's a first time picture he made it for the first time it'll probably get remade in our lifetime mm-hmm. but you know um what you're doing now with your music is you're you're making that kind of stuff um Thank you. you know but you're also a rebel because you told me earlier you're not using what software are you making beats with? GarageBand. That's just rebellious. So now, so all that the, the big 2016 folder, mm-hmm. all that's been, all that's GarageBand. Yeah. Now, I use Virtual DJ, mm-hmm. Fruity Loops, and Logic. Okay. So now it's a completely different time period setup. Everything yeah. just all new. Mm-hmm. And I'm not I'm not using um. I'm not using too much of Logic. Yeah. I'm using um, minimal, bare minimum on okay. Logic. Okay. Um, how do you decide which which DAR workstation to work through? Like, how do you decide these things? Is it just based off life? Or is it you navigating and picking something and saying, I want to try that? Navigation. Yeah. Mostly navigation. Like, mm-hmm. I, like damn. <laughs> I should have brought my laptop. Mm. Um... Yeah, like I, I create a loop in Fruity Loops, mm-hmm. um, chop it up, virtual DJ, mm-hmm. structure it in Logic. Okay. Structure and master in Logic. Yeah. So. That's actually a really smooth workflow. I think that's very intuitive. Each one of those softwares is great at what you just described. So you're doing it right. Okay. Um, but what what is what are the next steps for you in your journey? Like, what's the plan? Because I think you have a dedicated fan base, clearly. Um, you have all the skill sets to do whatever you please. So, I mean, most artists, their big void is having an audience. Um, I feel like you have I that. Agree. You I agree. I know? agree. I mean, I love my star chasers. Like, yeah. I, it's, I, I'm almost like a, like a kid when, uh, when Blue comes to visit you in kindergarten. Remember how they used to have the big bears come visit yeah. the kids? Yeah. Like, I love my star chasers. Yeah, I just, I, I feel like you know they they make or break me and I, mm-hmm. I, I probably should get out of that state of mind but I love when they show support to records I love when they finally come around to certain records mm. um, I think some of the lo-fi music you're talking about uh, was when I had just got home from jail mm-hmm. and I was using GarageBand mm-hmm. I w- wasn't in the studio I wasn't supposed to be in the studio until uh, at least mid to late 2012 mm-hmm. I had to get my head checked yeah my, my body was incorrect I was all fucked up you know coming out of jail nothing happened to me in jail yeah but you know I had to get conditioned to not being in jail yeah so um, I would record rap my ass off but on mm-hmm. garage band with no microphone I heard you, know? <laughs> you were rapping phenomenally <laughs> yeah so um, thank you uh, by the time I got in the studio, I was like, "Damn, I already killed the, I already <laughs> killed the mic, the fuck." So I was just having fun in the studio, and then yeah. it was, then the fun I was having in the studio turned into we want more of that. Yeah, and I was like, "But didn't you just hate the actual lyricism from 20 yeah. Nah, don't worry about that. Just get back and make another Coco Habits or mm. make another Ill Doesn't Mean Classic." Mm. So I um, ended up, you know, striving for the class. Some people strive for the hit; they fiend for the hit, mm. and I was fiending for the classic. Yeah. So I was going all over the place, the kind of retarded studios and shit, it was crazy. And uh, I recorded um, the mind of Charles Hamilton, the body mm. of Charles Hamilton, the soul of Charles Hamilton, the art of Charles Hamilton, and the end of Charles Hamilton. Mm. Five albums that became a series called CH's Anatomy. That sounds crazy. Yeah, it was it was dope. Yeah. It's just it's just you know, shout out to Bo and Dre. There was a lot of a lot of whispers going on in Harlem that had me paranoid mm. and I was, you know, snapping at my boys. They actually really cool folk, you know, mm. but they didn't they didn't mean no harm. They was yeah. just trying to intervene. But people saw them intervening and felt they were a bad fit for me. Mm. So I was like, people I rely on and trust don't really like y'all. Hmm. And I don't see everything that y'all are doing. 
I kind of don't trust y'all. Well, you got to trust me. We're living together. How you not going to trust somebody you live with? Yeah. So that was documented in the music. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Vampire Sunlight, Man of the House, um, Aware. Mm -hmm. Um, And once again, things are a blur because Mm -hmm. it wasn't so much drugs or meds. I was working so hard at that time. Yeah. You know, if when I wasn't in the studio, I was at the apartment making beats. If I wasn't there, I was in Long Island Mm -hmm. making beats. That... Check the beat folders. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So what's the what's the beat journey like? Um, obviously, we know you're self produced ninety five million percent of everything you've put out. Mm-hmm. Um, have your beats ventured elsewhere, anywhere else that people don't know about or do know about? Uh, well, everything is online for free. Mm-hmm. All the beats I made from twenty from Jesus Christ, two thousand five until. 2020 mm-hmm. is online mm-hmm. so they can be anywhere you know, yeah. I've heard I've heard my beats get interpolated on commercials mm-hmm. you know I've, I've seen I've heard songs where they rap over remakes of my beats it's like it's cool you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying I, I, I really can't get mad at it because it's towards the progression of the culture Yeah, but make sure it stays towards the progression of the culture like mm-hmm. be honest because I would love to see people break into my me- you know break dance into my music mm-hmm. you know I've, I have graffiti friends that enjoy listening to my music mm-hmm. um, you know I don't want to go out on a limb and say anything I'd rather have them on record yeah. say one two or three but um, yeah man I just Beats, rhymes, and life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love when people love my beats. I love when people love my rhymes. And I'm yeah. starting to learn how to love my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I identify myself. This is something I wanted to talk about. I should have brought this up. Yeah. I identify myself as a goth because though I bring the light, I hide from the light. Mm-hmm. Meaning I could be at you know red carpet events or whatever. I could be, you know, in Harlem going to all the hot parties and stuff. Mm. But I'd rather make the music to document the life of that party goer mm-hmm. as opposed to show up with my black UFOs, black nail polish, pink button down, mm. um, hair in a fro, and be like, hey, where's the party at? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just think... I, That's how I identify myself. Like, I'm, mm. like I'm, I'm good on the spotlight. Right. So, you're... Is this just you being an introvert? I think it goes a little deeper because Mm -hmm. I'm not one to quickly run to God Mm -hmm. because God helps those who help themselves. Yeah. Are you, um, I heard you talking earlier about like meds and stuff like that. Um, is that something that you've had to consistently take or is it just phases or? No, I mean, truth be told, I'm not as erratic when I'm on my medication, Mm -hmm. you know, so I got to kind of take the L here. Mm -hmm. Like I, I would jump up and be like, Oh my God, it's over there looking Mm -hmm. at you. Mm -hmm. But on medication, it's like allow silver to exist. If silver wants to turn into silver Mm -hmm. by all means, but I'm not going to force the issue. Yeah. And that's one thing that I'm guilty. Part of me. That's one thing I'm guilty of doing is forcing the issue. Mm -hmm. Um, Whenever I see people, in their higher states. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see Eminem anywhere. Yeah. You go outside, Eminem could be the person walking right past you. Mm. So, instead of saying, hey, M, wait for me. That's Eminem. Let him be Mm. Eminem. If Eminem wants to come around and say, hey, Charles, you know that was me that just walked past you? Cool. Whether I, whether I, I, that puts me in power. Like, nah, I didn't know it was you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. I feel that. Um, how has that um, affected the creative process? Has it at all? It, I mean, it makes me snap at motherfuckers. Like if you listen musically? to my yeah, yeah, it makes me snap. Like mm-hmm. when I when I can't when somebody is being someone other than themselves outside of who they are mm-hmm. to me and are trying to like direct me around or boss me around. It's like you ain't got those kind of credentials. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the person of whom you're blocking being has those credentials. Mm Mm-hmm. That leads to an argument, no progression made. Mm -hmm. I gotta wait for another opportunity to try to make up for it. Yeah. That other opportunity comes along, acquiesce, but destroy them on a microphone. Yeah. (laughs) 
I respect that. I respect that. That's, that's the only way I could do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, it keeps me sane. Mm. I think people want to stay out of the range, my, my target range on a microphone, which is cool. Mm. But you got to expect that. Like, if, you, if you're going to jump down somebody's back, mm-hmm. you got to know something's coming. Like, yeah. Me lashing out on a microphone is like me mumbling, you fucking faggot, to anybody mm. that says something stupid. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, there's a few... There's a few people left who can organically freestyle off the top. Mm-hmm. Um, I pride myself on... I've I said this on our record that I, I only associate with mutants. And what I meant by that was I like to work with people who are from that special cloth, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, all my buddies, they can spit a whole song off the top of the head type thing, you know. You're one of those people. But unlike you guys, when I write a song... I do not write it in my head. I can write pieces in my head, but I write the song out. Mm. Um, explain to me, someone who can't do it, what's the difference between your freestyling and you making a song in your head? Or is there a difference? Freestyling comes from the heart. Making mm. a song in your head comes from your brain. Yeah. It's about memory. Mm-hmm. Like you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard Jay say it. Like, mm-hmm. You come up with a line. Mm-hmm. You come up with a line, you think of something else. Come on the line thinking something else gotta add something else. Hmm. Come on the line thinking something else gotta add something else. Now what you gonna say? Hmm. Come on the line, I think something else. And the process goes like Yeah. Until you fully have it memorized. Yeah. There's like I don't wanna, you know, construct a paragraph that's not rhyming right now. Yeah. But come in there on I get what you're saying. I get exactly what you're saying. So you're you're writing it without the paper and just making sure that you don't have to look down at the paper to record it. Mm-hmm. I look at the light. Yeah. Okay. I don't I don't know if my memory is that good. I got bad. <laughs> I, got, I can remember all my records, but I cannot remember things that quickly. God bless Pro Tools, baby. <sighs> yes, indeed. I've done records the way you're describing it by laying a line, playing it, laying a line, playing it, and not writing it. But never, I mean, we had a session right now and this guy sat there and just kind of zoned into the record, blinked, and it was done. Now, I'm exaggerating slightly, but <laughs> just slightly, honestly. Um, and you did it twice. We did two today. So, um, yeah, it's that's amazing to me to see. I have other friends who do it, and obviously there's Jay-Z. He's probably the one who made it cool. Um, it's incredible to me. Yeah. And it's also hilarious to me because I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, there were some artists who would say, <coughs> no pen, no pad. And then they spit some hot garbage. You know? And I'm like, man, go get the pen and pad. They need not be named. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I always ask, because I think that those people are maybe just freestyling, you know, um, and just whatever comes in their head, they just throw it on the wax. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there are people who are writing in their head like you are. Uh, one of my favorite artists right now is Conway the Machine. I love Conway. Yeah, and Conway yeah. does what you do, what Hove does. He writes in his head the lines, but he's telling a personal story on his records. Um, and I, I'm just a big fan of artists like him where I can tell he knows the science and art, which is I know how to tell you my gun told music, but if you actually listen to the records, he's got personal life stories yeah, riddled his everywhere. It's crazy. I think yeah. his God don't make mistakes. Yeah. His album was ridiculous. Yeah. You know, he's telling super personal, amazing stories, pen bleeding, you know, punchlines. He's just technically sound, you know, and stuff like that. Those are my favorite artists, you know. So, um, yeah, man. I think that um, I, I want to ask you to tell me a little bit about Hypergoth, and that's pretty much everything. All right, well, hypergoth is a feeling. I'm gonna walk you through it. Yeah. You uh, you're in class, mm-hmm. and uh, you invested in uh, cryptocurrency. Okay. And uh, you get a notification that says you just made a million dollars. Ooh. In class. Okay. You can't act, can't shout. Mm-hmm. Stop. Okay. That's hypergoth. That moment. Yeah. And you turn that into a sonic album. Yeah. Jeez. So it is bottled up excitement. Hidden by darkness. Hidden like, by darkness. Because like it, you got a cloak. You don't. You don't want nobody to know you just made a million dollars in class. Right. And but you want to let the world know you made a million dollars. Is the class. album you telling the world, or or is it an actual painted picture of you holding it in? 
canon. Like you, I you actually just said it how I wanted to say it. It's a mm. painted picture of me holding in my enthusiasm. Like I'm curbing my enthusiasm. That is, ins- I'm gonna listen to it totally different now. My reason for even being in a halfway house, I'm so ashamed of. Mm. Like I, I really, I'm very ashamed of it. Mm. it sucks. But my Star Chasers funded a studio session for me to record a brand new album. Mm-hmm. So I get, you know, seeing them fund the session mm-hmm. made me want to produce even harder. So it's a different, yeah. different style of production, different concept of production. Mm-hmm. It's all live. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So the feeling is just, oh man, I'm just like dripping in hyper God. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I, I totally get it now with that backstory. You know, and then of course the medication subdues mm-hmm. a lot of my emotions. That's part of the cloak, right? There you go. Mm. So, and the, originally the cover, because TuneCore, I don't mm. know if you know about TuneCore. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so TuneCore, they, they AI generate covers. Mm. And one of the covers that was AI generated. I didn't know they're doing that now. Yeah. That's pretty cool. One of the covers that the AI generated was just like stacks of money. Mm. And it said Hypergolf going across. I'm like, I would, but I feel like that would throw some people off. Yeah, it would threw it would have threw me off for sure. Yeah, so it's uh it's all Curtis Mayfield and James Brown samples, mm-hmm. and um that's another thing I'm hyper goth about it. Like, where'd you get these records from? Like, I bought them. <laughs> mm-hmm. That that uh that definitely uh the Curtis Mayfield especially because I think we've talked about that two or three times today already. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah, so that's another one of those. Hold it to your gut. <sighs> yeah. Right. Right. So there's even some like layers of hyper goth within the hyper goth. Exactly. That's dope. That's exactly. Dope. Okay. Uh, you saying all that? One more thought I have before we wrap this up. Um, so, if um, we consider meds like a cloak, what what is a body of work of yours that was uncloaked completely? Which one, or is there one where everything is just? Well, everything for me has been creative. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I tell my I tell my story all the time. Yeah. Like, and I was about to say early, like, I tell my story so much, I almost don't want to talk no more. Yeah. But um, I would say Boy Who Played With Barbie. Mm-hmm. That that was like a really heavy album. Yeah. Like that was I, I discussed everything from homosexuality to like sacrifices and mm-hmm. um my own rape as a child. Mm-hmm. Um love affairs street affairs mm. business affairs I, I mean I put it all into yeah boy fuck boy who played with Barbie that's, yeah that sound like a heavy one don't judge me bitches <laughs> <laughs> nah it was it's it's interesting cause uh, the witchcraft uh, hand uh, signal is this mm. you know people see it's a naughty note like this this is witchcraft mm. and literally if you listen to it you know southern folk could get it but if you mm. listen to it it says boy who played with Barbie Okay. But I'm gonna have to at least take a peek at that. I'm sure yeah. it's on the site. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely on the site. Okay. Man, you your catalog's so long, man. You got a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey but, the water. Um, hey man, I appreciate you um being here today. Um Loser. Bless some people with an opportunity. This, this is a legendary beat. Like, Thank you. Legendary you, beat. You know how legendary it is. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I very much do. So shout um, out the ninth wonder. Woo! Columbine gang in the building. Alchemist. How does it feel to wake up to MF Doom? To all you watching, this is for the record. This gentleman is Charles Hamilton, the talented Mr. Hamilton, Sonic the Hamilton, C Die Hamilton. Plug the website one more time, please. CharlesHamilton.app. That's CharlesHamilton.app. It's a real website. Beautiful. Also, YouTube.com slash The Talented Mr. Hamilton. I update it often. The blogs are coming back. Trust me, the blogs are coming back. I'm just taking a little break so I can make more sense to me than I normally do. And with Rock that, on. we out of here. I gotta let that hook play.